Hi booktube! My name is Sarah and welcome to the Bookish Knitter. Today I am coming to you with a library book haul. Yay! Library book haul! So it is Saturday when I'm filming this. This video should be going up on Tuesday, I think. And I did work today, so I treated myself after working from home on Saturday to going to the library. Um, I needed to go anyway because I needed to take back books that I had out from the last time. So I wanted, and I also went to the library specifically to get one book that I want to read in a few weeks for Amish in April. But um, I, of course, picked up some other things while I was there because I really enjoy having a library book on the go because um, I'm back to reading multiple books at a time. So anyway, it's a thing. So let me go through the books that I picked up at the library today. I'm super stoked. So um, I just love going and just wandering and seeing what you see, like without any plans. It's like, it, it, I mean, one of the books, like I said, I knew I was going for that and I went grab that one first, but then the rest of them, they're all just like finds, right? So the first one that I picked up, or one of the ones that I picked up, was Low Country Hero by Lee Tobin McCain. McCain, excuse me. This is the first book in her Safe Haven series. And this is a book I had on my radar a while ago because I had gotten it from NetGalley back when I was on NetGalley. And I never got around to reading it. And um, I, I think at the time, like, one of my problems with NetGalley was is that I would see books that I had on there, like, at the, uh, like, on sale for Kindle or at the library. And I'd be like, no, I'm not going to pick it up because I have a copy from NetGalley, but then I'd never get to it. So, you know, it, it's not being on NetGalley really frees you up to just pick up anything that you want. So this is one of them. Um, Welcome to Safe Haven, where love and a second chance is just around the corner. Um, and I believe, yeah, so this takes place in South Carolina. And yeah, like I said, it's the first in the series, Lee Tobin McLean. She writes quite a number of books for the Love Inspired line for Harlequin. So her books tend to err on the sweeter side. And I guess in this case, because it's not particular, I don't believe that this is um, Christian fiction, but I definitely can tell you it's probably wholesome. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of books that she writes. And I really do like her stuff. So I am very excited about getting to this one. On the other end of the romance spectrum, in a way, from sweet to spicy, we have a book by Jackie Asherton, Find Your Way Home. This takes place in Alaska, um, which I sort of kind of love. Um, so I discovered Jackie Asherton, like, I knew who she was as an author. I knew what she wrote for. Um, she writes a lot for the Presents line for Harlequin. So that should tell you where she is on the level of spice. But I didn't read her writing until I started to read the Jasper Creek series by, um, she's one of the authors for the Jasper Creek series, which, um, the Jasper Creek books, the best way to describe them, they're like, I think there's three of them out and they're anthologies, but they're the, and the stories, the short stories in the anthologies are interconnected and they all have to do with cowboys, which is kind of, you know, the jam. So, um, the series is written by Maisie Yates, Jackie Asherton, um, Caitlin Cruz and Nicole Helm. And hold on one second. Sorry about that. So I wanted to grab one cause it would just be easier to explain if I could hold it for you. <laughs> So I knew I, I just saw this one the other day on my shelf when I was looking for something else. So this is a good old fashioned cowboy and it's part of the Jasper Creek collection series. So again, Maisie Yates, Caitlin Cruz, Jackie Asherton, and Nicole Helm. So these are interconnected. So this is a, I mean, this is a normal size romance novel, but each story inside, here's the Jackie Asherton one starting, is told by a different author. But all the characters, like the four, like the stories are all interconnected to each other. So it's not like an anthology that you would typically read where the stories don't have anything to do with each other. They might just have a common theme or something like that. These are absolutely fantastic. And if you do like your romance on the spicier side and you like cowboy romance on the spicier side, definitely check these out. So I brought that out to say that that's how I became familiar with this author. So I have not read a book just by her yet. And I'm very, very much looking forward to getting to this one. So the next one that I grabbed is by an author that I've heard a lot about. There were a number of her books on the shelves, but this one actually had two copies sitting on the shelf, which is why I picked it. I don't know why that's the reason I picked it, but that's the reason I picked it. And we have An, an Unwanted Guest by Sherry LaPena. This is a thriller. I have no idea what it's about, nor do I want to read what it's about. Um, it's a thriller book. Um, 
I think it's a closed, like, circle mystery. A weekend retreat at a cozy mountain lodge is supposed to be the perfect getaway, but when the storm hits, no one is getting away. So it is a closed circle mystery, whereas all the characters are kind of stuck in one place. Very similar to And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie would be my assumption, but a thriller as opposed to more of a thriller than just a mystery is my, my thought process. So it looks cold and snowy. We're going into the spring, so... Maybe this is the time to read something like this now while the weather is getting warmer. Um, next one, talk about books that I grabbed off of a whim. Now, I've read this author before, and I did, I do enjoy her work. And this one is based off of a real person. I always like when historical fiction does that. Um, so this is American Duchess by uh, Karen Harper. Sorry, I was looking for the author's name. Pretty cover, eh? So like I said, this is a true story about the New York Times bestselling author Karen Harper turns her storytelling talents to the fascinating tale of Consuelo, is that it? C-O-N-S-U-E-L-O, Consulo, Consulo Vanderbilt, um, her wedding of the century to the Duke of Marlborough and her quest to live a life beyond the glitter and gold. So when I looked this one up on Goodreads, because I was like just marking it or whatever, that I had borrowed it from the library, it doesn't have the best ratings, unfortunately. I happen to notice like the star rating. I kind of wish they wouldn't put the star rating right at the top because it kind of spoils it a little bit, you know? Like, oh, I didn't want to see the fact that not everybody loved this book. But um, I did see that, um, where was I going? Oh yeah, the first thing it says on the top is, before there were Harry and Meghan, you know, and I'm like, okay, each to their own. You do you. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm done hearing about Harry and Meghan. I am absolutely done hearing about them. I hope they live their lives happy and peaceful and away from the public eye, which is supposedly what they want. But I, I, I don't want to hear about them anymore, please. And as soon as I read that line, a part of me went, oh, no, I don't know if I want to read this. But I know it's got nothing to do with them. It was just the fact that that said that, right? It's like it's like now with every historical romance, they're like, just like Bridgerton, if you like Bridgerton. So they're trying to capitalize off of this American princess idea, this, this woman, this American woman um, marrying a titled man, which was done back then. Like this was, what's the year on the, on a cold November day in 1895, um, a carriage approaches St. Thomas Episcopal Church in New York City's Fifth Avenue. Massive crowds surge forward, awaiting the glimpse of the heiress. Just 18, the beautiful bride has arrived, not only late, but in tears. Yet her marriage to the aloof ninth Duke of Marlborough proceeds. Um, so she, it sounds like she's like bullied to marry this guy, but she kind of makes the best of it. I'm intrigued. I do love historical fiction. I love, 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 especially when it deals with real people. Um, I read one, was it last year or the year before? An American Princess, I think it was called, and it was the daughter of, was it Roosevelt's daughter? I'll put the title of it right here. I think that's, actually, I'll pop the cover of it right up here for you. I love the cover of this book. But that book was really good as well. And the other one that I really liked, I read um, Victoria by Daisy, oh God, cover will be up here, Daisy something or other, but the story of Queen Victoria leading up to her marriage to Albert, essentially. So that's the kind of thing I love. So this I should love, I'm hoping. If it's written well, if it's written well. So if anyone has any suggestions of any books that are similar to this kind of a thing where you're talking about a real historical figure, I would really love to know because I'm the more I'm like, they're not biographies. I'm not looking for a biography at all. I'm looking for a fictionalized account, I guess, of the person. Does that make sense? So yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. And last but not least, the book I actually went into the library for. <laughs> For Amish in April, the next one I need to read in the series, we have Among the Wicked by Linda Castillo, which is the eighth book in the Kate Burkholder series. Um, I have talked about this series. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know what a huge fan I am of this series. It is about a woman named Kate Burkholder who was raised Amish and then left the church. She did, or didn't, didn't get baptized into the church. Um, 
when she was supposed to or whatever and decided to, you know, leave and whatever. So she went off to the big city and she came back and she's now the chief of police in this small town called Painters Mill, Ohio. And a lot of pretty gruesome things happen. So this is a series, like I tell people, not for the faint of heart. Um, there are some pretty brutal scenes in these books um, that, especially for books that contain people who are Amish, like, you know, she works alongside the Amish community. She is formerly Amish, so she knows how to talk to them. She's familiar with the people who still live in town and, you know, the old Amish families and things like that. And she... It, it, for a book, again, for books that deal with Amish characters, these are not fluffy at all. They're not fluffy at all. Um, and I think that's really kind of why I'm drawn to this series. I know that sounds stupid, but it's like you have this image in your head of these people who are Amish, who are like, you know, God-fearing, tend to the earth, you know, quiet people, you know, um, that sometimes the Amish in these books are the victims. Sometimes they are the perpetrators. And I love Kate Burkholder as a character. I love the other characters in this story too, um, or in these books, like Mona, who is the, uh, her dispatch girl and, um, Pickles, <laughs> the old man who, who still works with the police department. You know, he's like in his seventies. <laughs> I just, I adore these books so much. I mean, it sounds like a weird thing to say about a very brutal thriller series, but not only are you reading about um, the the cases, if you will, but also the characters. And the characters are so well done in these. And even though I do have the physical edition, I do recommend these on audio if you are an audiobook listener. Because the woman who narrates them does a fabulous, fabulous job. So, yeah. Anyway, that is my library haul, you guys. Let me know in the comments below. Have you read any of these books? What did you think about them? And until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, guys.